are back on the corner of Lunt and Glenwood in Chicago, listening to um, good folks like Jack Weist, who just talked to us about youth unemployment and how we can uh, maybe have uh, put a helpful lobbying effort into our senators to get that money back on a bill um, to make sure that some of the unemployment gets a, a dented. It's an important issue. and. Uh, as we usually do on Live from the Heartland, we cover a variety of stuff every show. Stuff, technical term, you all know that. That's what, the way we talk. Um, this uh, next guest is a person who I just let her know we're going to get to know each other over the air with you listeners listening in. Hello, Kai Dickens. <laughs> Hello, Katie. How are you? Welcome to Live from the Heartland. Thank you. Um, my co-host and co-collaborator, Lisa Smith, contacted you or some way re uh, reached out to see if you'd be able to come on the show so first and foremost we say thank you thanks for having me and you dropped off a film which i watched last night great and this uh effort of yours congratulations thank you very it's it's an animation type uh documentary you yes, call it a documentary yes definitely right? it's kind of genre bending though yes <laughs> yes indeed that's that's a good way to put it um and basically, you're talking about you start your your jumping off point was your own coming out experience. That's right. All right. So we're talking lesbian, gay, trans transgender, bi issues, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the church or right. the churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's the background, folks. So let's hear from Kai on, you know, what was your process and in terms of saying. This needs to be shared. Yeah, well, the film starts when I came out to my sorority college sisters, our sisters in college, and I went to school in the South, so there was a very kind of religiously fueled freak out when, when I came out to all of them. And I didn't know how to defend myself, very much like I think a lot of people when they hear, whether you're gay or straight, if you hear a very religious person kind of condemning homosexuality with the Bible, often you don't know how to defend what they're saying. So I went looking, you know, reading books and looked on the internet for information. I couldn't really find anything. So what, what year was this? This was in 2000. And, e wow. you know, even then the internet was still kind of just starting to balloon. Yeah, but by then it should have been, yikes. It, it wasn't easy. Yeah. So, um, so I went and talked to ministers on my own and decided to take the information I learned and put in the film and make the film animated and fun to watch because the Bible can be very boring and dusty otherwise. <laughs> yes, you did. You did do that with the with the quotes coming up, it was very, uh, it was well done. The animation mm. was pretty well done. I, I found two local, um, they were actually students at the time at Columbia to do the animation and they were great. And yeah, they were great. Yeah, it was fun working with them. All right, so wait a minute. Were you at this college, were you already I I steeped in some church uh, practice yourself? Not, not really. Were I, your folks? No, my, my parents aren't that religious at all. My dad's agnostic. Um, but they surrounded you with... Uh, well, I decided to go to Vanderbilt. I really wanted to go to the South. I had this romantic vision of what the South would be like. And Vanderbilt is still on the cusp, but not... Yeah, it's, it's a, in it's Tennessee. A, plus, it's a Big Ten, isn't it? I mean, it's an Ivy... It's considered an Ivy League college, It's is considered, it like... Yeah, hotsy totsy. Right. <laughs> right. We'll just use that. Another technical term. <laughs> hotsy totsy. I like hotsy it. Hotsy totsy. Right. Thank you. Um, so th you wanted to experience. I totally understand mm -hmm. wanting to experience yeah. the South. Where did you grow up then? I grew up outside of Chicago. Outside actually, of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Cool. In a suburb. Yeah. And was this your first film? This was my first feature. I've done a lot of short films and that sort of thing. So you know, but uh, doing a short film is is one thing. Doing a feature is a complete investment in time and energy that that was unbelievably overwhelming for three years but three years yeah it took about three years and did it uh, from what i read it looked like it actually came on the scene in 2008 no no, no it uh it was released in 2009 we basically oh. finished it july of last year so oh, it's wow. been a little less than a year and we uh premiered it at outfest in los angeles last july so how fun was that? It was amazing. It's it was been great, but the film was just released on DVD this past April, April twentieth. So so this is like a whole new ride that we're on right now. Is uh -huh. kind of watching it finally be able to be accessible to people in little pockets of the country and just kind of you know it's 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 really cool. How how wonderful for you. Now the other thing is p listeners should know that they can go online and, and see a little bit of a, a trailer, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and it's called. 
Uh, www. Well, obviously, Fish Out of Water film. I don't think we com. even said the title till oh, now. Oh, right. The, the name of the film is Fish Out of Water. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's fishoutofwaterfilm.com. And you can see the trailer there. You can even buy the DVD there. And we have a, a thing on our website where you can anonymously send it to someone else. Because uh, I think there's a lot of wow. parents, teachers, edu educators, people would want to hear these messages but don't want to give it to them on their own. So we help you out with that. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering about this graphic. Is is the town on fire? That's Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. On right. fire, right, yeah. Of course. They did straighten that out for you folks, they by sure the way. Did. It's interesting. For those of you who need fuel um, in talking to your, you know, Bible quote and relatives or friends, it's very useful for that. That's what we're hoping. It? We want it to be a tool. We wanted to make a tool for, for not just the gay and lesbian community, but our allies Everybody. instead. Yeah, because exactly. we hear this stuff a lot, and it is very hard. You know, we talk about in the film that kind of every anti-gay sentiment in community, in society at large, does boil. You know, is is um, you know, Sourced. stems from the Bible. Yeah, because you know, God made Adam and Eve. You know, uh, marriage should be between a man and a woman. You're unnatural. All that stuff comes back to the Bible. So we really break it down in a way that. Kind of anyone can be able to articulate arguments or... Okay, let me ask you this. Sure. Why do we care what the Bible says about your choices, your preferences, our lifestyles? Well, I think that's the ultimate question that kind of gets batted around often between, um, I think, the gay community and, and, and within the, our own gay community. Like, why do we even care about this? And the reason why is because the battlefield in which all the political arguments are being fought is still the Bible. So we can say, you know, we want ch separation of church and state, you know, or if you don't believe in, if someone doesn't believe in that, I don't believe in it, so it doesn't make a difference in my life. But the, the point is that all, all this is still being fought on the Bible as the battlefield. So until we can have an educated discussion and I think eradicate the arguments they're making, we're not gonna get anywhere fast. And it's, and outside of that, this is still the number one issue for diminishing gays and lesbians um, in minority communities especially if you look in the black community the latino community right. it's that's the, true yeah the church is still the center of the family the community well so. okay and and then in the course of the film you interview you have on on film a number of church folks mm -hmm. from different uh denominations etc right, yeah. um and i think if i recall correctly i was literally watching this between 11 and midnight <laughs> you know i'm old well um, I think you only had two guys who were like s s hanging in there and saying the Bible tells us so and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And one of them was that kind of foaming at the mouth guy. Right. Um, Fred Phelps. Yeah. I hate to even repeat his name. But mm -hmm. um, the other one was trying desperately to be reasonable. Right. Um, but most of the rest of the church folks mm -hmm. um, and, you know, lots of times church people are the more educated members of the community. Sure. Yeah. Um, we're being pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, do you think that reflected the way it is out there? Um, yeah. And in fact, one statistic that I ran across recently, a, a minister from Texas called me to tell me about it, and it's that 68% of clergy, Protestant clergy, believe that gays and lesbians should be included within the fold of the faith from marriage to ordination, but only 7% have said so publicly. Ah, uh, sure. So, that's the reality out there. So you got there. that going on. Right. And I think that's what I found interviewing people over and over again. Ministers were saying, you know what, this is, this is nothing that we would even discuss within the halls of you know, seminary school. It's just something that's an ancient issue that's been misinterpreted. Yet they won't say that from the pulpit. And so that's sort of one of the things that I'm really hoping the film can help you know, so bolster up ministers. When, uh, how do you challenge that cowardice? Because you really need for them to stand forward, stand yeah, up, right? And I, you know, I, yeah, sure you do. And I'm not necessarily calling the clergy cowards. What I hear over and over again is that no, the, that was that well, came no, out of no, my no, mouth. No, it's, I mean, I think that's the, <laughs> I think that's the the um, the idea though that, that kind of is out there. Oh, you know, why 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 are they being cowards? But it's more the idea that that they are taught to be like a shepherd of the entire flock of their congregation. You don't want to divide them. You don't want to right. create infighting in any way. So don't bring up a hot button issue. But right. we're trying to say, listen, you have to believe out loud because when people are being diminished and lives are being ruined and relationships are being broken apart because you're allowing parents, friends, educators, whatever it is to stand up there and use the Bible as a, as a weapon, right. you're causing more harm than good. So yeah, that's sort of my new crusade is getting ministers to try to stand up and believe out loud.